Okay, moving on in our full study. We are in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 14. And we pick up on our 112th passage about the fool, the foolish, the foolishness. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, the Bible says, The wise man's eyes are in his head, where they belong. They don't need to be looking other places where they're not to be looking. They're not far-fetched. And then when we see that contra, we see, but the fool. The fool is never wise, and the wise is never foolish. Walketh in darkness. You can't see, you stumble, you hit things, you bump into things. You have no idea where you're going. So, guess what? A fool cannot see where he's going. And I, Solomon, myself perceive also that one event happens to them all. What's one thing that happens to the wise and to the foolish? Death. The wages of sin is death. And a wise man will die in the Lord what God has prescribed for him. And a fool will mock God, will say in his heart that there is no God, and will not please God before he dies. But death is coming for the wise and for the foolish. The wise may live longer, the fool may live longer, but death is coming. 2.15 then said I, in my heart, said to himself, as it happens to the fool, so it happens even to me. And why was I then more wise than I said in my heart that this also is vanity? Well, first of all, the wisdom that Solomon had was a gift of God. Solomon, I mean, God came to Solomon one day and says, ask anything. And Solomon says, listen, I I'd like to have some wisdom. I'd like to have some knowledge so I can govern and judge your people. So I can be a, a proper king to this nation of yours. And God said, granted to you, I will give you wisdom because you did not ask for wealth. You did not ask for the death of your enemies. You did not ask for long life. You did not ask for riches as a fool would do. And God granted him. But fool or the why foolishness or the wisdom there's one thing that happens death happens to all why was Solomon more more wise he he says so he can do service to God and be pleasing to God so we would have the books of Proverbs Ecclesiastes Song of Solomon there is not one book of 66 books in the Bible written by a fool. Now, there are plenty of books out there written by fools. You can find them at a library. You can find them at a, a bookstore. You can find them at a Christian bookstore. You can find them online. But Solomon was able to give us wisdom by the wisdom of God so we can learn more. And the Holy Spirit says, hey, let's put him in the Bible. So... In your wisdom that you're going to die, in the non-wisdom of foolishness for a fool to die, there's one difference in our death. A wise man can be used of God and a fool can just die. Verse 16. For there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever. Seeing that which now is in the days to come, shall all be forgotten. And how dieth the wise man? As a fool. Again, the principle is death comes to wise people, death comes to foolish people, and their names are forgotten. We will lift up the first president of the United States, George Washington. Wise or fool, I don't know, but name his children. Name George Washington's father. What about George Washington's neighbor? To the right or to the left? 
anybody and everybody. You take where you live right now, the, the rental place, the, the place you own, the place your mortgage. Who was there in the spot where you are 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago? What was their name? Now, I can go into records. I have a, a bookmark of the ownership of the place I rent right here and the house that I, I had owned. And I can go back years, a few years, a decade, maybe a century. What a thousand, what 2,000, what a 3,000 years. And the common man, though made importance to his family and to his employer, when death comes, the reality fact is you will be forgotten. We will have to maybe put a plaque or put something with your name on it to say, oh, who was that? Well, that was their desk. That was the president of this company. That was somebody who did something. Other than that, you wouldn't even care. How many people know that J.C. Penney, of the owner of the J.C. Penney department store, was a saved Christian that gave money to missionaries? I bet you were to go ask every J.C. Penny employee in America today if they knew who J they wouldn't know nothing. And you can't even find anything written about him and his salvation, but God knows. So, fool and wise, there are people who will remember and there are people who will forget. The wise man is nothing more than a fool in death. America will put up to the remembrance of foolish people more they will do than the wise. And those people that this day and age that we're in, those that were wise, those who w did have intelligence, they're breaking down their memories, they're trying to erase them from history, and they're, they're putting in with invisible ink the remembrance of fools. And that's sad. Verse 19. 19. And who knows whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he, he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed him myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. So what we have here is a future child or children. Now, in the account of Solomon, his son Rehoboam, who would be the next king, was a fool. He did not take counsel of the men that grew up with wise Solomon. They did not look, they, he did not take the advice from those who have learned from King Solomon of the wisdom of God. He took the people he went to school with, the people who have not lived life, the people who have not learned lessons. That was foolish. And what Solomon had built up as a kingdom, as people for God, Rehoboam broke the nation into two, north and south. And the North never got right with God. So you may work so hard, you might budget everything you got, and your child may or may not burn up the inheritance. I'm going to leave a nest egg for my children, for my family, and when they get that nest egg, they just blow it on stupid things. That's a fool. Or they may get that nest gay and they may properly fund it and probably may make more money of it. A man could build a, a, a business of his family, work so hard, and then when it's time for the children to get over, they just sell it and don't want to have anything to do with it. We don't care about dad. We don't care about the business. We want to go do our own thing. And that could be good and that could be bad. We don't know what our children are going to turn out. We don't know, and we have no situation control after we die. When the reading of that well, and uncle gets this, and brother gets this, and daughter gets that, and wife gets this, and this person gets that, you don't know what they're going to do. You end up in a hole in the ground with a suit that somebody dredged you. As your body is asleep in darkness and your soul is either with 
God or with hell by the decisions you made in your life, but a foolish child is not going to do what you want him to do with your inheritance. A wise child might do more than you expected with the inheritance, but again, they all, we will all die. And you may have your children do right, then you got the grandchildren, or the great-grandchildren, or the great-great-grandchildren. So, here's the future of the child and children inheritance. You may be a wise parent, and your child may be a fool. Or your grandchildren, or your great-grandchildren. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 5. So not all the fools we're talking about would be ourselves. It could be our generation to follow. Four or five. The fool foldeth his hand together and eateth his own flesh. No work. He's angry. He's stubborn. And he devours himself. I'm not going to get things right. Who would they think I am? I'm not going to humble myself. And then you can get medical ailments for the worry, for the concerns, for the anxiety, and give yourself an ulcer that just eats away your stomach. You can have yourself get in anxiety and just take medications that will do more harm to your body than good. It's pride. It's no work. It's not taking care of yourself. Anger is a sin when you sin. Let me show you what the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. There is an anger to sin. Now, there is an anger and no sin. But there's an anger that can draw to sin and draw you to foolishness. I've had at work many times. I got angry at the boss. I got angry at somebody else. And I blew my top and... I went back and said, listen, I'm sorry. It was a bad day. It was, it was all my fault. And you got things right. Well, why don't you work in that place no more? Because I got angry stupidly and I sinned and I'm not going to go and humble myself. You're a fool. You're a fool. 413. Better is a poor and a wise child then an old and foolish king who will who will no more be acknowledged. Sorry, this is the way I got my Bible marked. I, I couldn't see it. Acknowledged. You got a king, he won't listen. You got a president, he won't listen. They're stubborn. Being broke with intelligence is better than being a leader of a nation, a boss or manager with no knowledge. I've worked under these people. I have worked under the most stupidest people ever that don't know the job at hand, but God has put that person in charge and he is my boss. And he ain't doing no good for himself. He ain't doing no profit for the company. And most times they will cause more harm to the company than good. That the ruler here is the king will not take any warning or instruction. Again, we're running to Rehoboam. He would not listen to the wise men. He listened to, and I wouldn't say the foolish, he listened to the adolescents of the children that grew up with him and destroyed the nation. Why? Because he would not listen to those who were to be able to listen to and take heed to what they had to say. And yet that counsel was of God. So, a poor wise man, a child, who is able to be taught is, is better than an old wise king, I mean, an old foolish king that won't listen. A child, remember we talked about one of the foolish things we did in Proverbs is we spend all this money for foolish children who don't want to learn. Then they grow old, they still don't want to learn, they still don't want to listen. 
better for that child in kindergarten who, who wants to learn the ABCs, wants to learn the, the songs, wants to learn how to count, who wants to know how to write his name, goes in the first grade. I want to know how to do one plus one. I want to know the things of first grade, and I want to go into the things of second grade. I want to grow into third grade. I want to learn all I can in the fourth grade. And I want to get myself to a high school diploma and maybe college to learn something I have chosen for a career that is a wild child. You get an old man, and he may be the CEO, and he won't listen, and he won't take heed to what people would help him. Walk up to any CEO, any master of any business today, any tycoon, walk up to him and say, if you're to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. For the gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life, you're not going to get to God. You're not going to get to heaven. And they don't take heed to what you just told them, what is wise, what is right. They're a fool. And if you can get a little child to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved, glory. The younger, the better they get their names in the last book of life and be taught more and more how to be as a Christian. It's hard to grow an old Christian. They've learned too many wickedness. They're too hard-skinned, too stubborn. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear then give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. So, fools sacrifice to God, but in the eyes of God, it is evil. You see fools as without knowledge, they deny God and will not be corrected. And they mock sin, so they put their money in the collection plate. They show up Sunday morning and say, look, I'm in church. They tell others, I'm a Christian. And they don't believe the word of God. They don't do the word of God. They have not believed on God. And they're just doing a religious outwit show of you're a fool. And so they'll go in the church house and they'll talk and look how good I am. Look how wonderful I am. Oh, I can, and they promote their businesses. I've seen that happen. Where they come in and try to sell insurance to the people in the church. Thank God for a few pastors that threw them out. And they're blabbing their mouths, they're blabbing their mouths and blabbing their mouths. But they won't listen to the preaching. They won't listen. The fact is, unless they put their faith on Jesus Christ, they are lost and going to hell. I'm a good person. Who do you think you are? Again, they're that old king that won't listen. Foolish people will talk and will not reverence God. And when God's trying to talk to them, they're talking their way out of God, and that's foolish. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. So, again, a fool talks too much. Yak, 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 yak. Preachers and lecturers are fools. I am a fool. I talk too much. This right now is the 18th, uh, what do you call it, the 18th, sermon, the 18th study that we have, we are on 119 full, foolish, I have spoken 119 scriptures, I have spoken 18 times about the fools, somewhere along the line I have taught from Genesis to Revelation, Going back to Genesis, and now we're in 2 Chronicles 3. 
I have taught about husbands and wives and children. I have talked about the blood. I have talked about Calvary. I preach on the streets. I have talked to people about salvation. I have talked to people about growing in the Lord. I have a multi multitude of words, and you just heard me mess up right there by not saying multitude correctly. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to mess up. Somewhere along the line, I'm going to say something I didn't mean to say or say it incorrectly or not do it right or have the improper English that's going to churn somebody off, be off be messed up again, churn somebody off because he doesn't speak proper grammar. Well, did you hear what he said? He, he said, you know, he, he got that guy's name wrong. Or he said he didn't know the name. You know, that person in the Bible that did that. He could never get John the Baptist's father's name. But, uh, you know, okay, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. But I'm a fool that can be used by God. I have never denied God. I had never not proclaimed the gospel. And we're going to come later on when we get to the New Testament. We're going to find that Paul says that preaching is foolishness. Imagine me getting up on the street corner and yelling out to a bunch of people who don't care about God that you're going to go to hell if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. To them, it is foolish. That's scripture. A man gets up electric for, for his business, for a school, and everyone, oh, man, here we go again. Oh, boring. Oh, I wish you shut up. Wish you, I wish I was somewhere else. That's foolish. Now, employees, we're going to talk our, our yearly talk about safety in the workplace. We've done this every year. I've been here in this company for 20 years. And it becomes foolish. Until that one time you do make that foolish mistake and break the safety rules and injure yourself. Until the time that, you know, you're mocking that preacher and he's preaching about Jesus. And the time that you die, you go off to hell. It's no more foolish. It's, man, that guy was right. I was the fool. It comes with teachers and it comes with complainers. Complainers are fools. They're always talking. Oh, this don't work. That don't taste good. This is bad. That's bad. This is terrible. Can't do that. Oh, well. It's a multitude of words. It's a multitude of your mouth speaking too much. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 4. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. For he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Okay? I'll give you two classic examples of fools. A man's on a battlefield. Oh, Lord God, you get me home from this battle. You get me alive. When I get home, I'll be that preacher that mom wanted me to be. And God has brought you home, and you are home. You're no more going to have to fight. You're no more in the military service. And you just go about your life, and you don't care that fox hole religion, we call it. Here's another one. A vow. To death do his part. And then divorce is foolish. I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to dedicate my baby to you. To all the rest of the life of this child, I'm going to give to you. And you fall out of church. You fall out of being a Christian. You fall out in the service of God and fellowship with God. And you let your child go the ways of the world and all that. You, a fool. It's better to say, Lord willing, than to say, I vow. Lord, I will do. Lord, I promise. Don't. Because you may not be able to fulfill that promise. And then you be counted as a fool. Fools do not complete their words, contracts, marriage vows, swears, oaths, and responsibilities. When you do not complete what you have vowed to God, you're a fool. Uh, Ecclesiastes 6 8. Ecclesiastes 6 8. For what has the wise man more than the fool? What has the poor that knoweth to walk before the living? In the life, what is a wise, what is wise to a fool? They both die. We've looked at that. 
Ecclesiastes is a book that's written to view the earth, the world, and the physical. There is nothing heavenly about Ecclesiastes. Oh, I'm going to say Ecclesiastes says, it says he drink and be merry. In the world. In living the physical life that you have to have, you, you know, eat, drink water, drink Coca-Cola, drink Pepsi, and then be happy. But that's not a reference to God. Now, God will give you the ability to eat. God will give you the ability to drink. And God will give you joy, love, and peace, the fruit of the Spirit. It's nothing spiritual in this book. So in the scope of living, death happens to all. Saved or lost, a saved fool or a lost fool. A saved fool or a wise saved fool. Saved man. Learn the fool dies without God. And he goes off to hell. That's foolish. So... Does a rich man, if he dies without God, he ends up in hell with the fool. Jesus spoke about a rich man that ended up in hell. He spoke about Lazarus, the beggar, who went to Abraham's bosom because he done right. The rich man that had the table and had the food and had the luxury and had the parties. He was the one that became the fool. Wise men know what is suspected by them by or from God a wise man will study the scriptures a fool will read just to read a fool will say hey I read the Bible all the way through in one year what did you learn nothing just read it through look at that little mark I got a wise man will say, hey, I've studied the Bible all the way through, and you won't believe the stuff I read this time going through that, and I never knew before, and I wait, can't wait to start over and learn more things. And then learn more things. And get to know God more and more and better and more. Fools will die as wise men. But fools will die of no knowledge of God. No knowledge of the holy. And a wise man will die trying to seek that which is right with God. So what's the difference between a fool and a wise man in their death? One man did not please God. The other man tried to please God. That's the difference. And when Solomon writes in the worldly view that he does in the book of Ecclesiastes, he's looking at it's two human beings. That guy's a fool, that guy is wise, but they're both going to end up in a graveyard, maybe the same graveyard. What happened? That guy didn't do nothing for his lifetime, didn't have anything for his family. That guy did everything he could for his family. He, 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 he gave him an inheritance, and then his children went and wasted an inheritance. What's going on here? And Solomon does not look in the book of Ecclesiastes beyond the grave into the glory of heaven or the damnation of hell. He just looks about, and all that you get a hole in the ground. That's an atheist point of view. There's no God, it's just a hole. But, oh, yeah, there is a God. And there is quite a difference between a fool and a wise man when they die and they begin eternity. Because when you die saved or lost, when you die fool or in wisdom, you begin your eternity, your soul, going to God or going to hell forever. Death does not end your life. It only begins your life. A life without time, a life without a calendar, a life without dates, a life without seconds. There's no time measurement in eternity. 